Our population growth is a big challenge. Our, con our population growth average grows at 2.9%. This is the highest, I think, in Africa. And the demography of our population also is threatening. As a government, we forgot about the family planning programs that we had in the early late 70s, early 80s. And we thought when the HIV AIDS came up, maybe that was going to take care of the population. That has not happened. So we have decided that this year we will be launching the family uh, planning programs. There are a few things that drive African growth. And I think the, this more applies to, to Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, are more obviously than anywhere else. That's where you see the, the, the visibility or the impact of these factors. Uh, we've got, got both internal factors and, and, and external factors. For internal factors, uh, uh, there's domestic consumer demand. There's been a very silent march in the growth of the middle class in Africa. And here I must choose my words very carefully. My preference is for the phrase middle of the pyramid middle of the pyramid, because you have bottom of the pyramid, you have the middle of the pyramid, and then you have the top of the pyramid. In the middle of the pyramid, it is that group uh, that is spending something like between $2, $2 a day to $20 a day. Uh, there's a lot of dynamism in that middle that is driving uh, domestic demand. Uh, but I must say this, those living between uh, $2 to $4 a day, which is about 150 million people in Africa, uh, uh, 150 million, two to four dollars a day, uh, are still vulnerable to shocks. Shocks that way they could slide back into poverty. And again, perhaps this speaks to what needs to be done to keep them in that middle of the pyramid uh, uh, so that they never slip back in, into poverty. There is a chapter that we developed in uh, the, the recent book by the, the Oxford University and Central Bank of Kenya on investment. In fact, it was a surprising conclusion that if when you parade all the indicators, it is even lower than South Africa. Then we have to ask ourselves, where is this contradiction coming from? We have the open policies, we have open everything, but it is very restrictive in terms of investment. So my, my dear brother, uh, Minister for National Development, we need to go back and study our institution. I, I was going to bring this point again at the institutional level. Why is it that we are so liberal? Our policies, macro stability, returns on investments are high, but we run a very restrictive uh, investment uh, uh, environment. And we have Kenya Investment Authority. We need to ask ourselves what exactly happens. And this is something that surprised us when we came up with, when we looked at the data, we looked at the evidence and we found that. It's, so essentially, we have to look at the receptiveness of our institutions or the economy to this uh, private investment. The second point is that will these emerging partners, emerging economies, provide markets for our exports? And what kind of exports? We need to go down and say, planning is about identifying where you have comparative advantage. We have, in the East African region, identified ourselves as country with a very, uh, should I say, locational advantage, very interesting locational advantage. But we also want to go in and say, in the emerging economies, what kind of comparative advantage do we want to take advantage of in terms of our products? Very early. For many years, and I remember uh, Moses Ikera, we were talking about why can't we process coffee? And we even came up with projects. Chris Kirubi was reading this. Value addition. Why are we exporting just roasted beans? Now it has happened, isn't it? But we now need to look at the appropriate markets and chains. In the chains, we have to see we are gaining. The tea production managed to do it very well. We need to go into all the products. That is how to take advantage of that. I now officially launched the African Economic Outlook Report of 2010-2011. And there it is.